Good day, folks. Welcome to week four, Introduction to Finance, Finance 311, Summer 2021. Uh, we're covering an awful lot of work in the class. We're doing in six weeks what we normally do in 15 weeks. Uh, so there's a lot here. So it, it is intent, but it's intended for you to learn. And I think you can learn very quickly in a short period of time. Your retention rate will actually be better. The first thing you should be working on this week is your application project two, which is due June 15th at 11.59 p.m. You need to, if I make comments on application project one, you need to incorporate them into project two. We'll talk more about that in a moment. There'll be a quiz on June 17th and then the current events presentations. So that's what you should be working on. Application project two. Uh, again, if I made comments on project one, you need to address them, okay? This project is due no later than June 15th at 11.59 p.m. And then on by the 16th that day, I will have everything back to you so that you can proceed on project three. Uh, project one is the starting point for project two and you need to incorporate project one into it. That doesn't mean just add them on, but to integrate them, how does it flow? You're telling a story. Watch the video before starting. Um, it's worth 18% of your grade, so make sure you give it that level of attention. Um, it will take 10 to 15 hours to complete. Again, I suggest that you take an hour, look at the 10K, 10Q investor to see what they cover. What do they talk about? It, it, it's all there for you to do. Um, you need to complete module three and four prior, prior to starting project two. So if we're looking at this on a sequence, you should have already done module three and four. Uh, when you're doing it, avoid definitions. Think about it from the business perspective. What is it telling us? Okay, don't be specific. Don't speculate. I think this might be a cause. No, no, answer the question. Your answer should not be a question. Read what you write and say, am I asking a, making a statement or am I really asking a question? Think about cause and effect. Think about different lines. So if something happened, what was the impact of that? What was the cause and effect? So if expenses went up this year, did expenses go up because additional health and safety protocols for COVID-19? Okay, or did they go up because of supply chain shortages? So be specific. You should comment on specific lines. You can't comment on net income alone because it's a function of income, co revenues, cost of goods sold, which produces the margin. So you can't talk about the gross margin until you talk about income, revenue, and cost of goods sold. Um, everything you need is in the 10K, 10Q, infographics, and investor presentation. Take an hour and read. If you keep coming back to the business side of things, I think you're going to find it much more. Uh, effective. Now, quiz two, uh, you must start the quiz by June 17th at 11.59. Once you start, you need to finish. It's going to be count for 15 points, 15% 15 of your grade. Um, it's going to cover modules two, three, and four. Now, just think, you've had some of my quizzes before, and some of them are exactly um, like the project. So remember, you have a set of tools. Use the tools you have. Um, covers modules two, three, and four. Allow two to three hours for the quiz. Uh, be specific, avoid generalizations. So that's quiz two on the 17th. Um, current events assignment, purpose again is to get an understanding of how course material by seeing the application to what's happening today in 2021. Uh, there's two components, the article review and presentation, and then participation in real time. The process is you review your article and discuss with your partner. Uh, prepare a 10 to 15 minute presentation discussion. Now, in the group, some of you have been part of this already, and you, and you get how it works, is that you're making a principle, we're having a dialogue around it. So make sure you know your topic and what it is. Uh, use PowerPoint or Prezi, but again, what's the article saying? What are the key issues or points? How will it change the way things are done? How will it impact you? How will it impact the firm? So you can use PowerPoint, Prezi, or whatever else you want to do. Bring other things in. Um, then schedule a time for us to review. We've got some of them scheduled, but let's uh, try to do this. The sooner the better. 
we need to get them all done by June 30th. I honestly not like to wait until June 30th to do them. So get to me with you and your partner when you'd like to do it. I keep coming back to this uh, same mean matter. Um, say, what is it telling us? A summary of there. You gotta start there so we have foundation. Then mean, what it, it's about interpretation. How do you know that? Then matter, what are the implications? This is the thing is when we're thinking, uh, just going through the, the summary part is nice, but it doesn't help us. We gotta complete the loop, if you will, but why does it matter? What, um, again, you need to participate in real-time discussion with four current, event, current issues presentations. I will post the times and Zooms of invitees of presentations, and you need to be present and participate. I'll bring you in, but I want you to jump in. It's worth 6% of your grade. Um, so, and we need to also have that done by June 30th, so that you have time to finish up your last project and the last quiz, and we can get all the grades in. Uh, this week so far, there are seven scheduled, um, and what I've done is identified those that are OB or finance. You're welcome to attend the OB ones because I think you're going to see a lot of connections between them. But from a uh, this week, we got uh, Ben and Rebecca to discuss how Microsoft's chief accessibility officer does her job. Um, central banks jumping into climate change fray. Uh, meat prices rise. Um, good moods. ESG bonds, um, requiring vaccines in the workforce, an interesting topic, and then rising wages. And you click here to join the event. Um, so that's the key thing. Uh, just to share, uh, we had a couple of presentations last week, and one of them um, was about taking breaks. Um, I've actually posted that one in Canvas for you to look at, but I think there's a difference culturally um, and here's just a little thing, um, European out of office message. I'm away camping for the summer, please email back in September. Where the American out of office is, I've left the office for two hours to undergo kidney surgery, but you can reach me on my cell anytime. That, we have that hard part as Americans of breaking away of taking a break. And that has been complicated by COVID. So um, go ahead and, and take a look at that discussion that we had, it was actually pretty good. Uh, what I want to do now is, is, is talk about some of the things that are, are happening on a very general sense that I think is important for us to understand what's going on because of the implications on how a company is managed, which has the impact on its financial affairs. Um, this is an interesting one, is that remote work could double permanently, okay? And this was pre-COVID. Um, 78.8% of firms surveyed said they don't see remote work in the future. But look at what's happened between them. Fully remote went from 12 to 22, partial 189 to 146. So this has implications from the finance perspective. There's the cost, okay? There's the data security of doing that. There is, how do you manage a remote or partially remote workforce? So these are behavioral issues that have to be addressed. What a company does, how do they implement and build strategy? So that's sort of the key thing, that this is a fundamental change that will impact companies. And I think it'll be interesting to watch, but keep that in mind as we move forward. Uh, we also had the Consumer Price Index came out um, a day or so ago, and what we've seen is that on a year-on-year, -year, we've seen an increase of 5% in cost, the CPI, overall. Now, when we go back and look at it, we can see it wasn't as high as it was back in 2008, but it dropped way back down, but we're looking at 5%. Now, that's a pretty big increase. The Fed's goal is 2%, but they're letting the economy run at 5%. Some people say it's transitory, meaning that all the stimulus that went in is causing this to happen and will revert to a more normal rate. Now, I think we gotta look at this within the context of who's impacted most by a 5% increase. And it's generally those of low to mid income because they spend more of their the money they earn. 
So if you make $50,000, you're going to spend just about all of it. You're not going to save that much. But if you make $250,000, your savings rate is much higher. So and you have more funds to draw from than does somebody at 50. Now, let's look at this 5%. I think it's important to look at this within the context of history. And this goes back to 1915, uh, well over 100 years. And what you can see is that we've really been in a fairly stable range, if you, if you will, uh, going here probably from 1990 on. We've seen ups and downs. This was, uh, last time it was five, just the Great Recession. And then as we entered into the recession, it dropped. Um, same thing here as the economy slowed, and this was COVID, and now we're recovering from that. But if you go back and you see, we've had times um, back in 1979 where we had 15% inflation. We were getting 10% raises back then. Um, you know, that sounded like an awful lot of, you know, whoa, things were going real crazy. But this is when you see the history right after, you know, in the, in the 20s, the roaring 20s, we were looking at 24% inflation. So this is, um, whenever they see these bars, right, this is recession. So what you have tended to see is in a recession, we drop off and we have deflation and not inflation. Um, and the question then becomes, what drives what? Does the level of inflation get so high that it has to drop back down? And that's what we've seen here. We've seen it here, 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 especially here. So this is just to keep it within the historical context. So it's pretty stable. And what everybody will be looking for is that. So that's inflation. So we talked about the change due to COVID and remote work. We talked about inflation. Let's now go back and look at people. And since 2010, the um, no, raw number of the population between 25 and 54 years old has remained the same. But if we go back to 1970, it was growing every year, which means that there was a market for jobs. So this, this, this age cohort remained about the same. Okay, there's no growth. And this is your prime workforce. So it's hard to grow an economy when you don't have the volume of workers. Um, and if you look, the change in labor force participation rate for people 25 to 54 since January 20, you can see that more women left the workforce and men left the workforce. But we're, we're looking at, uh, this goes from the, it's the start of the pandemic, um, at the low it was down three and a half, but these, it was still down a lot of people. So if we're down, a lot of people, and this number is flat in total, and the participation rate goes down, that means there's less workers available. And I thought I'd throw this in just for, for fun, and I don't think it's any surprise, is that if you take people and you break them into high wage, middle wage, low wage, um, what you find is if 100 is January of 19, and we see we're going along there. Everybody's pretty much holding their own, and here's COVID. But those in the low income have dropped off much more so than those in middle wage and high wage earners at 98%. So the job growth is really happening more for those that are in, in the high wage group. Um, the good news is the job openings in the country right now, and just about 9.2, 9, 9,286 open jobs. A uh, survey said that there was going to be 8,002, so that's a surprise. But take a look at how many openings they are. There's a lot of job openings. But when you see that population, 24 to 54, prime working age is staying the same, there's not going to be enough. And that's what's leading to the inflation. Okay, so I went through this just to give you a sense of some of the key things that have happened in the past week that really stand out from whether this is finance or OB. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel, to, feel free to reach out. And uh, I look forward to our discussions this week, so have a great week.